Hello, I am Adam Steigert. I'm the director of FANG. I am with... Hi, I'm Melody Rurg, and I play Chloe Romero in FANG. Hi, I'm Elvis Presley, and I play Jason John Beebe. <laughs> no, I'm Jason John Beebe, and I play Chris. I'm Jenny Russo, and I play Shelly. And we're here today just to tell you about the film, give you some spoilers if you've already seen it, experience it together. Um, the opening scene we're going to get right into uh, was very controversial. It was, the, it was one of my uh, late nights working on the project, and I'm like, I need something that's going to shock and awe the entire audience. Uh, the moment they open up the uh, the film, and well, you get what you get. And there it is. Shocking Shock. off. Shocking off. Shocking off. Ugh, there's the chunks. There's the chunks. <laughs> that, that, was, that was actually craft services. Chris was the table. We all ate off him the whole time. Oh. Oh. Yeah. One thing I love about this film is the color. It's such a like unique color palette. It's a very, uh, we advertise it as noir. I would say it feels very noir. Yeah, I agree, definitely. So, we had talked, Jenny and I, for a long time, you can watch our other podcast that we did uh, about that in more detail. Um, but we, ta we talked about wanting to work with each other for a very long time, didn't we? Mm -hmm. Yeah, started, well, when we met each other at Scaricon, and then you saw, well, we were actually in a panel discussion together, sort of by accident. It was a filmmaker panel, and I can't remember why I was pulled up there, somebody wasn't there, but you were there, so they're like, oh, Jenny could be there as the actor point of view. I think that was when we first met, and then you saw my film, She Kills, and then we kind of made the connection of wanting to work together. Now, uh, Jason, um, this is a, this is a film that, like, we had talked so bef like so much before about how I needed you to be the big, brute, strong character for the film because we had to kind of create the illusion that you were going to save the day. That was the big thing. Remember we talked about that? Yeah, I have to say really quick, I just saw Michael O'Hare's name on here, and I just watched this movie for the first time since the premiere about a week and a half, two weeks ago, and uh, um, Michael was a big staple in the Buffalo film community. I met him 10, 11 years ago, and uh, he, he passed away recently. So for everyone to keep that in mind when they see this movie, and he, he was a really good actor, and I, I kind of got the feels when I was watching that last week. But... um. Yeah, you told me a number of times basically what you just said. I was the kind of the level-headed, uh, tough guy that was going to save the day. And that's kind of, uh, that was always in the back of my mind when I was reading the script for, uh, you know, getting a character. Now, me, Melody, I don't know if you remember, if you remember that was a blow-up air mattress. And uh, <laughs> it moved every time you moved the bed that you guys were on. Hey, baby. Oh, here's your favorite you scene. Yeah. Oh. How much the party? How much you got? You did really well on this. Like, we shot this last. What? And interested? Melody, uh, I felt, yeah. and this is, I'm speaking for you, so please tell me how you feel. Uh, we're, <laughs> knowing how your relationship with you and Mike were, because he was on set with us all the time, did that help you at all when you were, like, doing this you scene? skip the fucking negotiating, and you take off your clothes. Rock kill you right where your pretty little. You ass just froze up. What was the last part of what you said? <laughs> Did it help you at all knowing Mike no. while working on this project? So much, it, and it's so weird because he's seriously the sweetest, kindest guy ever. Um, and yeah, it was definitely like it's a weird, uncomfortable scene. So it was so nice having someone who did everything they could to make you feel comfortable. Um. And, and yeah, so that definitely, definitely helps. Boy, this only got 50 you know, bucks. you and Theo have such great chemistry in this film. I mean, it felt like you guys were a legit couple. You know, I remember, I don't know if it was what you guys, if you guys had talked it out beforehand or whatnot, but you guys, like when we were in doing takes, you guys were hugging each other. You were off the side. You were keeping that uh, vibe between yourselves so that it could come off on camera. I don't know if that was purposely, but if it was, it was honestly one of the most brilliant things I've ever seen an actor do. Some score. 
you said I paid back from last time. <laughs> Thank you. Seriously. Um, well, how should I have known it was? I mean, it was pretty shit. real, Look, honestly. Chris um, isn't doing this me shit and Theo and besides, you became from like literally just like best friends. Chris like I feel like he's me. like a soulmate for me in some type of way. I don't, I don't know. He just we connected. Off, we got really close right now. And so it was so exciting working with him. Um, and I didn't really feel like I had to do any acting at all. Um, to have chemistry with him so that definitely Look, helps <laughs> I didn't see this giving us the money that we have to point out here we also lost leora what owens she also that? passed so two people unfortunately they passed on this project and she was yeah. Can't you get that your thick um, yeah when she got this role um there was nothing written for this character and i asked Kristen, or chris and i talk and i said talked and said can we write her something because now that we knew she was interested in doing the part it was like why not have her really get some, she's such a great actress and i think the world is um is lost because of it absolutely it was so amazing having the chance to work with her and she was such a sweet sweet woman um, now melody i gotta point this out this is one of my favorite scenes one of my all-time favorite scenes there are three scenes in my history and this is one of them that is one of my favorite scenes because of the artistic flair in the feel that you two both give off throughout this moment. Just watch that. The chemistry is like perfect. Thank you. I mean, I'm, I'm just saying, I mean, this is honestly like, it's such a very like... It was definitely a weird scene to film. I know he felt really uncomfortable, obviously, making me uncomfortable, even though it was acting. Um, so yeah. <laughs> What you mean though? I love the way that you shot that. Yeah. Yeah. And that is really my was shot. I remember doing this scene with him and you I think you were in the room for it. It was a very small crew in this one because you had to be derobed uh, enough. And I remember just feeling that his emotions in this section. I remember feeling that when we were sitting there watching this. Oh, it was it was crazy. There was just this like tension and this energy in the room. I know we were all very quiet and just kind of let him prepare for it. Um, and yeah, I was blown away. I killed yeah. so that I could. One thing we got in trouble for. What was that? Is that the candle we got in trouble for? Is that drippy candle? It might be. It might be. Where are we gonna go? Where the fuck are we gonna go? Remember the track marks, Melody? Can you talk about the process of getting those track marks every time? Oh my gosh, that that was fun. I mean, Phil did an amazing job with them. Um, it definitely was a process of using different... And I actually had some type of reaction on my arms to the stuff that makes it look like it was a scar. Um, so I remember developing like rashes on my arms that like lasted a really long time from it. But it was so cool and so realistic how it kind of puckered the skin. And then he kind of like, I believe, kind of airbrushed on um, using kind of like a pink on type of thing. I don't know exactly what it was, but to do the, the shading of it. And I was like, I've, I've never seen him in person, but I think it was pretty damn believable. Uh, yeah, right. You've never seen him in person. <laughs> You know, there's a scene coming up, um, and unfortunately, Jenny and Jason weren't there when we shot it. Uh, they came later in the evening, but I, Melody, I know you can remember this. We shot this this upcoming scene where you guys are leaving, walking to uh, the Crawley house. It's coming up here in just a moment. And we actually went to like several different locations, and then during the middle of shooting, we stopped and we went for pretzels. Do you remember that? Oh my God. Yes, well, because didn't we have to go into the mall to get um, some photo booth pictures of me and Theo? Yeah. So I know we were like, Auntie Hands, we need pretzels. I bought the, I don't, actually, I can't say I did. I don't remember who did. I thought I did, but we bought the entire crew and cast that day. There was like 12 of us, all yeah. pretzels. It was awesome. Like, it was, that was like, it was such a family, you know what I mean? I think that's why the movie looks so good. I actually enjoy this scene a lot that was just playing because you did it at the Grand Elevators. It reminded me of Ambus a little bit, and it also kind of had like a documentary oh, feel, which I thought was really cool. What well, to we wanted to do that to connect. Remember, we oh, it's all about connecting everything. It, uh, and this is where we see Jenny and Jason for the first yeah. time. I'm you know my, my personality a little bit here. Oh, and your dress. I'm excited for your dress. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I got to say, this scene right here, 
I think, remember you guys washed my suit and you weren't supposed to, and it came out looking totally different? Yes. And we had to put like, duct tape on it? I don't know, but in person, it was like, what'd you do to my suit? But on film, you can't really tell too much. No, you can't tell at all. It actually came out really good. But I remember we washed it. We should not have done that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean. And there's that scene, Melody, coming up where the um, right. the pictures of you guys fall on the ground. So that relates back to our Aunt Annie's thing there. Yeah, you know, I actually still have those pictures up, like in my mirror. I oh. always. When my mom gave me when I was younger. You right? Yeah, I'm fine. The behind the scenes with, of this was funny because wasn't there one point where we had like the map upside down? <laughs> we're like looking at the map all seriously, but it was like upside down. Yeah. 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 No signal. This was our last day of shooting right here. Can you yeah. believe it? This is the last day of shooting. I just love this dress. Yeah, I mean, these folks are out here, right? Oh, not that bane of my slip. existence. She still has it, Melody. Don't let her fool you. She told me. I do have it. I can't say I've worn it since then, but I do have it. Okay, sure. I mean, that says a lot about my girlfriend when she wears that dress to a wedding. Well, a white, white is rude. I know, white is rude enough, but then that white dress, it, that just right. that tells who I am right there. Yeah. You know, the other reason why we went with white, too, is because when you get bloody, we want to see the blood the entire time. Oh, yep. We, uh, we, uh, everything was very colorful in this. Do you guys, I don't know if you remember me talking about it, but this film yes. and the horrific Eel Monsters is all very colorful. That, like, Melody stands out because of her, or her orange, pinkish, whatever color that even is. Um, yeah, uh, shirt, and then you stand out, Melody, because, or Melody, excuse me, you stand out, Shelly, because, Shelly, oh my God! You, Jenny, to stand out because you have this, like, whiteness in, in a, a very black feel of a film if that makes any sense i mean seriously you look like you i remember in this scene i did like a little no uh i put my finger on her nose and bopped it and you loved that i did that you pulled me aside you're like jason that was awesome you know why? Good. <laughs> just that little thing you know why that is come on i don't know it's because later on melantha did the same thing to you and you accidentally mimicked it so no, it can i don't think so yeah, there wasn't any accident at all. I knew I was what I was going to do right from the get go. No, I I don't think it was uh, the fact that you knew about that already. I think it was just an irony that both you did the same thing. It was like a fake. Did she do that to me? I remember her like patting my the bib on on me. She does. She did. So I, I thought that was amazing. It was like the perfect accident that that happened. Nice. Well, very well maybe you can't hear what I'm saying, but you can tell it's nasty. Upset about this, okay? I got that freaking car three weeks ago. How was it to work off of one another, uh, Jason and uh, Jenny? Did you got? Did you think you had natural chemistry when it started flowing? Yeah, it does. yeah, yeah. I, I I I hope to work with her again. I thought I think we do good together. Yeah, yeah. and we proved that I think also in the horrific evil monsters. You know the though because we were very competitive in that film. Right. so whether yeah. it's this kind of like sexual tension or whether it's that there's definitely yeah we work right you guys don't no doubt i love this scene you're just like trotting off all sometimes, all shelly style yeah well sometimes shelly is just <laughs> i can't get a signal anywhere yeah <laughs> oh i love this miss Shouldn't be so jump. Ah, uh, there's Harold. Name's Harold. I'm a caretaker for the crowd. Yeah, he was the surprise to, to me. Um, you know, pa I don't know if you know this, but Patrick Millette was originally supposed to play him. Oh, really? Yeah, me and Pat had talked, and he had a lot of interest in playing him. But Pat is more bulk, so I had asked Pat if he would read for Roy and if he could put something into that. And I feel like, I remember telling uh, Pat, because he stayed at the house too, I remember saying to him, I said, I want to feel scared every time I walk past you. So please keep that vibe up every time we talk, uh, every time we we interact. And I remember later on, he's in the hall with Michael here. Um, and he just, uh, he, if you watch the behind the scenes, you could feel the tension in the air. So he did really well. I'm glad this worked out. And I'm really glad Gregory um, ended up taking this role because, I mean, he... He shines, man. You know, the, this play, this play at the uh, Niagara Falls uh, International Film Festival, and I was there. There was an actress from New York City that was there that I actually know really well, and she came down with one of her actress friends, 
and I stayed for their movie, so they stayed to watch Fang. And um, at the end of it, this woman from New York City was like, oh my God, that's Gregory, Gregory Blair. We were in the same film school together. I'm like, wow, what a small world. Yeah. yeah. Melly, talk to us. What's going on here? What is uh, how you, What is the interaction, your emotion in here? Because there's something going on. Quiet people. I think that's why Mr. Crowley likes the country so much. Seems the Crowley is like maybe there's not. Privacy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, maybe she froze again. That's okay. I like this shot. Why is that? Yes, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm not too sure. What did That's you what ask? Everything froze. Oh, um, <laughs> uh, I asked what what your emotion was in this like section because this is the first time you see the interior of the house. Oh, um, I mean, for me personally, it was pretty awesome. I, I mean, I remember kind of being on the porch at least, talking with Her you know, Harold, and that kind of feeling of. I don't know, being excited to see her family, and I think she kind of finally realizes she's nervous, like this is the only family she has left. Um, and so I think it's kind of like that little kid excitement feeling, like, well, what are they like, and are they going to like me? Um, and so, yeah, I think that's kind of her emotion coming into this, and also kind of being freaked out already by Harold. Mayor sold a lot of the town's property off. I feel like Jenny, we got to see a lot of your like range here at this point because you kind of went from being Miss Attitude to being like, uh oh, wait a second, what's going on? Attitude, there we go. Yeah, I was say there was attitude in that face. That's <laughs> But yeah, she does start getting scared. You can you can definitely see where Shelley's trying to keep up the facade of of being tough and but also starting to shrink away of like what the heck is going on. This is. This is a little unnormal. Unnatural. Yeah, you're, you're, you're just about to bat my hand away from you, I think. Yeah. When I go to grab it. You know what? Go ahead. No, no, go ahead, Mel. No, I was just say, I feel like my character is like the last to catch on to the weird vibes happening here. Like everyone else is like, mm -hmm, this is a little funky, a little weird, strange things are happening. And she's like, no, I'm just excited to be here. Yeah. I think, that's, I think that's normal, though, because your character, it's your family. You don't want to think that they're anything weird about them, they're up to no good, so. Yeah. Don't they believe in land? You know what's so unique about this, too, is this was the first, this was the first scene we shot right here. <clears throat> and... Power went out. Well, power went out. Um, so, we had to get the generators, and Keith, who was the production manager on this, Keith Lukowski, who was production manager, he said we, we had debated for weeks about not bringing the generator. So we were like, ah, eh, we don't need a generator. Ah, generator. No, no, we don't need a generator. And then he says, well, I'm just going to bring the generator just in case. And literally, I think we had one take in, and the, it, it, the power went out. It's an interesting start to the whole shoot, for sure. Because that was night one for everyone, right? Yeah. 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 Definitely an interesting start. You know what else was kind of unique about this is... In this film, we use more... Yeah, there it is. Yeah. <laughs> In this film, we used a lot more unique styles. Um, like, well, actually, I'll explain it when they come up because I get interrupted by this scene too. This is another great. Oh god, this scene! Watching it back, I wasn't in the room when it was filmed, but wow, it was very impressive. And there's actually a little bit of a longer cut on this, but all that was was water, sugar, and water, and we heated it up, and it looked like looked like heroin. No real drugs or needles. Actually, they may have been real needles, but they were fresh needles, and we had taken the blades out. Or the, maybe we didn't even take the needle out. I don't know, but it nah. was not real. I promise. He wasn't really injecting himself with anything. No. He just had his arm turned towards the camera in this shot. That's all it happened. The acting is so oh. Yeah. Now remember, Melody, we needed the the pictures because we screwed up, or I had screwed up, probably me, <laughs> and it screwed up and ended up having uh, we lost, we forgot the hair clip or something was supposed to be on the ground. Oh my God! Yes. We didn't use it at all, and it was supposed to be on the ground for us to or something. Yeah, I feel like that was originally thing. It was like the clip from her mom or something like that. Um, 
But yeah, yeah. I think up then changing it to the this pictures. This is what that same justice looks like. See his hand? And that worked out really good because everybody was giving me shit about the blood being on the window. Because the blood's actually on the outside of the window. It's not on the inside. So when you see it, everybody's like, it's not going to look real because it's not in the car. I'm like, it'll be fine. It's a window. And when you look at it, the, it doesn't look like the glass is... Like, it doesn't look like it's outside the glass at all. You know her? Yeah, I know. Who is this guy playing uh, opposite? He came in from out of state, didn't he? Yes. Darren Bar... Darren Bar... Cole is what his name is. Very... Is he, he, run a, he runs a website or something, or...? I'm not entirely sure. I think he, he's just an actor that likes to play police officers in movies a lot. Oh, okay. So... <laughs> I, I think he may be a real police officer. I'm not entirely sure. He's a local junkie scumbag. Well, I ran all her known relatives. Only one local is an aunt and an uncle in Mexico. You know, Losi in this scene, he is just like, Losi's like spot on for this role. <laughs> he was the first person cast on the film. Oh, wow. Yeah. I remember that because I'm like, I'm going to try and get investors. So could you come over and put, we can put you in a whole old costume and we can just shoot some random shit. What are you thinking about? Well, shit. And, uh, I bet he's awake by now. Yeah. There we go. You're not seriously thinking about going okay. to see that retired crazy. And we ended up doing this little spot and, uh, we ended up, um, we ended up doing this recording for the film, and Losi ended up uh, helping sell the sell the product for us. But I kept telling him, "You're uh, the Bandit, smoking the Bandit." I kept saying to him, uh, "I want you to feel like that type of character, but but it's a little bit more smart in the sense of going that route, but feeling that jolly feeling that that you have with that character." I think this is where Shelly is uh, losing the attitude a little bit, and she's starting to take things a little more seriously. Yeah, where I realize that I I need your your strength because I'm yeah. <laughs> right. Did you guys have a? I know Jason wasn't on this on this location very long, but to Melody and, and Jenny, did you guys have a lot of downtime? Yes, it was nice because since we had a lot of scenes together, a lot of our downtime was together too. So. We got to be sticky and covered in blood together and trying to figure out, all right, how do we sit without ruining furniture, being covered in blood? Not in the scene yet, obviously, but later on. Yep. But like 15 hours, hour days on hurry up with me. <laughs> but we did spend, I feel like, a ton of time actually filming. So there definitely was downtime, but this is I don't know. I don't think it was too extensive. What did you think about the seeing Roy and Doris for the first time? Was it what you expected? Roy. Call me Roy. Melody? We're free. Anybody? Again. <laughs> Sorry. It's okay. I, I didn't really I didn't really know what to expect personally. Um, I'm Chris. So this is my I, I thought it was cool. Her. And I was awed by them. Melantha's yeah. characterization, Patrick's the characterization. I just, I'm glad I didn't know what to expect because it just, it helped make everything more real in the moment. Actually, I think Pat was a little bit louder than I pictured his character would, would have been. That was probably the biggest surprise for me. Excuse me? You must stay for dinner first. But the makeup, the hair, the, I mean, for both of them, that, you know, just, it was, everything was just on point. Oh my god! And yeah, I know it's so great. I thought great. I thought Mel, uh, I thought Melantha, I, yeah, I thought Melantha did really good. I mean, not the Pat didn't neither, but I, I thought everyone did good. Yeah, but yeah, she, you know, just all of this, like this right here, just this, this. is so her as far as just getting into that character. What'd you think of the eye patch? Did you like? Did that work for you at first when you heard she's gonna have an eye patch? Or no? I thought she was a pirate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This scene. Oh. Ugh. <laughs> uh, I got. I have like a. I don't know if I have it still, but I have like a four minute behind the scenes on my camera, the lead up to this and everything, and then diving in the food, and oh, it was pretty great. Oh, yeah. God, it was so crazy to watch. Indeed. Well, yeah. Oh, yeah. 
Remember you guys were flip-flopped originally? You got Melody and Theo were on the one side, and Jenny and Jason were on the other side where they're sitting. Remember we, we switched that? Yes, yeah. Kind of. Because I think we have a, you have a still, actually, that you released, I think, where we're still flipped. Yeah, yeah. I love, I mean, I just love the dynamic in this scene. This scene is actually kind of scary. Oh, yeah. That's... I like the scene. I like I like the the darkness, the color, the candles in the background, the framing. It's cool. Oh, it was so cool how you did like the tracking shot on the table. Please, mm -hmm. that was so weird. It's PVC. Remember, we just had PVC on the damn thing. And Keith was pulling it back because I was pulling it back. It's just yeah, I turned so, out great. So they, there's no audio, but basically they're acting extremely weird. It's like out of the ordinary type stuff that we're reacting to right now. You will sit there and you will eat my wife's home for dinner. <laughs> you can't just keep a show. <clears throat> you know what? And I love how she just, Let's she just is able to just keep that same face. Sit here mm -hmm. enjoy the nice I remember when, I remember like getting, like watching this. And I think Jenny and you, and I talked about this before uh, on a podcast that, um, Watching her eat her own hair when she goes in for the food. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Just, I mean, just watching the whole the whole thing as it played out. It was like, oh, she's, is she really, oh, she is, oh, she's really, yeah, there was. Do you like food? All the reactions, I think, probably for all of us are probably pretty real. Remember we had a uh, hog swallow. Was that it? Hog yeah, swallow. that's right. <laughs> She she purposely looked up that word before filming. She wanted to look up like the weirdest word that met something, and she came up with hog swallow. What was going on? <laughs> so great. I still don't know what it means. I gotta look it up. Oh, uh, this moment where they're staring. Chris? Oh yes. Chris, what's going on? I love that shot I where it sees you between the bottles and stuff, Melanie. That is an awesome shot. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. There it is. Yep. Oh God! Oh. Watch, watch, she eats her own hair. Watch, watch when she pulls her face back. Right just here. Just a normal, just a normal family dinner. <laughs> Do you remember this opens to everyone? Do you remember reading this scene and saying, "I not know"? Did you know what to expect? Did you expect this? No. <laughs> This was amazing. What just what they brought to it was amazing. Not that the written word wasn't great, but this just what they brought I, to it. Was I, I didn't expect this. Now all those candles. More candles. <laughs> Always. The, the candles were just reused for every room. <laughs> Kept reusing them. This was mine and Melantha's room. I'm pretty sure. Yes. Yeah. Yep. This might have been the room where you got in trouble for candle dripping, actually. Yes, actually, right where those candles are, there was a different candle, I think, that we had there that ended up dripping. He, he, I think one, of, one of my most memorable things in this house while filming is there was only supposed to be like a certain number of people in the house, as the owners told you. And then they came and like a bunch of us had to go upstairs and hide in a bedroom in the dark and whisper to each other. And we were just like joking around, kidding around with each other, saying the goofiest stuff. We were like whispering in the time it was okay to come out. Yeah, you were up there. We were like, <laughs> Yeah, that was pretty memorable. We had to limit how many cars were in the driveway so they wouldn't figure out that there was more people there than were supposed to be. Yeah. And didn't you guys break one of the windows and then you replaced it with like even a better window than they had? Yes. Yes, we do. When Theo, when Theo touches the glass, he breaks it. It, it. it literally, like you could just put your finger on it, and he could probably have broken it, like your little finger. And Keith fixes it, but then he breaks another pane. So he had to go to get another, another, <laughs> another piece of glass. We had two. It was a three-pan glass window, and he did two of them. <laughs> this is quite the standoff right here in front of the door. Oh, was oh wow, this was a crazy scene too. Some fun stories with that. Yes. Please tell us a melody. Yeah, you're gonna have to tell. Um, so yeah, there are a few where you know whatever happens, Listen, blood got on the ceiling not spending when it shouldn't night. have. We had so to clean that up. Help us. I actually remember Melody specifically 
you were like, it was a very really serious moment, but you were like laughing when I was doing, writing my dialogue with you. And I don't know why, but you were like, I don't know what it is. You're like, I know you're serious, you're doing good, but for some reason, I, I want to laugh. What's I, up with I, that? Find those moments. <laughs> down that uh, door. You just are dying, and I'm like, I don't know what's happening to I me. But yeah, I don't know. And then there was also the moment where in this scene, there's blood that gets squirt squirted at us, us girls. Okay. And oh, there you go. And um, it went directly in my mouth and like down my throat. That's right. And like literally, they called like cut, and I like threw up blood What's on the ground. We had somebody with water pretty close by. Oh, oh my god. I mean, they were all amazing on set. Like, they're ready with towels, with water, with a blanket. Like, they were just right there. So, you feel a little uneasy? You were starting to feel so So, that was amazing. Excited for everyone to see that shot. Billy, I have to ask because I feel like at times in the beginning of this project, I feel like you weren't totally expecting the amount of blood that you got. No. Is that true? No, I, I, I did not know. And then they're like more buckets, and I was like buckets, <laughs> four gallons of blood. God. But yeah, so that was a fun surprise on set. We, but I will say, like by day two, maybe three, Melody, you were like, all right, you're gonna get me bloody, get me fucking bloody, let's do this shit now. Yes. I was like, wait, how much blood? And then at the end, I was like, okay, let's just, let's do it. Let's do it quick. Let's get ready. Where's my allowed to Step sit away on? From the door. Um, Did you get a bunch of all day? So. Ah, <laughs> oh, yes. There's also that later on. <laughs> that, that, that story. Oh, there oh, it is. Boy. There we go. Yeah. Uh, blood on the ceiling. Blood, yeah. Remember this? I can't believe I can't I can't believe I can't believe you killed the star off in 20 minutes of the film. I you know. Is it still great? Yeah. That was a scene where I had to fall back on like a mattress, and I realized how hard it is to try to go up and back in just the perfect way. Jenny, here's that scene we were talking about the other day. Yeah. We were talking about how Jenny is. There's no Jason when I'm actually, when you see me crying, there's no Jason there. Yeah. And that's because Jason had to go and we, we lost track of time. Um, remember we had to reschedule that whole shoot for another day? Yeah, that night just, well, I think part of it was the blood on the ceiling and just that that night just went so long. And so we finally had to cut and said, all right, we're just going to have to pick it up tomorrow but we knew we wouldn't have jason he was wrapped so i had to do his death scene without him actually being in my arms but it, it cut together nicely it yeah good. you'd never know the difference melody yeah. i know you want to say something go ahead and say something i saw it oh uh, i don't know i'm just emotional ago, seeing michael i know <laughs> gave me three months to live he was a good guy i worked with him on almost all my projects too to tell you yeah he was a really great friend sorry about your really really great. he's he's uh woman. one of the last uh films i acted in was with him we have a lot of scenes together and the movie's not even released so that's going to be pretty surreal watching it and uh it's unfortunate that he's not going to get to see it but michael's one of the last guys i worked with on a movie now that whole room that you're seeing, we spent about two hours, the crew and I, putting those pieces of newspaper up. Because when when I kept telling Kristen and, and the other assistant directors and all that, that, hey, we need more than just a little bulletin board. I said, I want it from top to ceiling, nonstop paper. So for like two weeks or four, we started collecting all these newspapers and then we just started writing stuff on them and then printing things and throwing it in there. So if you look at that, that wall, it has a lot of Easter eggs. Yeah, it does. Oh, I loved that shot. That was like one of our first things was in that closet. Yes. I love the stills that came from it too. Dale did a good job with taking a bunch of really like artistic looking stills of us kind of peeking our heads out of the closet covered in blood. Yeah. Dale's like the unknown hero, I guess you could say, because we don't talk about him enough, but his photography uh, has really helped us uh, deliver this film. Yes. Like, 
It's an old pocket watch my great grandmother gave to me. Really? Yeah. I must strongly suggest Give it to him. We return Give to it. Our rooms for the reading. No, I think you can show us where Joe is. I like the fact too that at any point you guys could have left the house. What are you so afraid of? You could have left. Like no one thinks about that. They were allowing you to leave the building. And none of you left. That's how I think they would have I think I think they would have locked the doors before anyone actually got out of there, even if they tried. Yeah, they're sneaky, those Crowleys. Exactly. Hello. And their pet Harold. Mr. Crowley. Yes. Oh, this Crowley. is a great scene too. I like this. This is right before the window broke, I think. Yeah. Oh yeah. We're gonna see we're gonna actually see the window. I think we actually see the take where the window breaks, to be honest with you. I'm not entirely <laughs> sure anymore. That candle that he that he's holding is the one that ended up dripping on that table, Jenny. Oh, oh, that's funny. That's the bandit. Let me tell you how not funny it was when the owner told me. Yeah, that didn't they try to say that the the um, what is one of those things doily or whatever was worth a lot more than it actually was? Yes. Now, now, I don't know if you guys remember seeing Burns for the first time. He was not covered in blood like this. But he had, like, his little undies were all, like, yellow and black. And he had little spotches on him. I'm like, what did they I'm like dude, they that's not enough. Give me the fucking ball gag. Give me <laughs> Well, look how, you, look how you dress me in uh, the horrific evil monsters. This is just kind of the stuff you like. Yeah. Hey, ball gags, <laughs> sexy gladiator outfits, you know. Definitely a theme. Yeah. He actually stuck to that chair. The blood adhered to his skin, and he stuck to like if you see his arms and stuff, he's actually stuck to his. Oh, your stomach, it's so. That hurts. That be stuck when have your skin like sticking to stuff like that. That hurts. I'm... Now, when oh, yeah. when Theo put the the blanket back over him. Just wait and see how much blood the blanket absorbed on the ground and meat and shit. And he just tosses it back. Oh, oh my god. Oh. Just wait for it. I mean, I sent him a text at like 11 a.m. I sent him a text like really late at night. And I said, I said, Burns, I want to put you in your underwear. How do you feel about that? I'll go naked. Eat. Who are you? So I wasn't the only one who had to. No, he wanted to be naked. I the actually not curious. They find you here. They all... No, he did a great oh, job, and he really I sets the it. he sets the Why tone for the whole here? film. Oh. Hey, and that crotch shot. Eric. Yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> it starts uh, off. Uh, actually, that was Why one of my favorite parts here? of the movie, right there. What the crotch shot? That exquisite crotch shot. Who is Absolutely. It? Friends. Right. The candles. Yeah. Can we do a drinking and game. Like, like, right every time we see candles. candles every right. time we see those candles. Candles. <laughs> Water will do. Oh, there's the window. Is that the window? Um, I think it was. I remember giving people coins. I don't know if I Where gave them to you guys. I think I did. Yeah, at the I, yeah, uh, I have one. At the cast party. I didn't get a coin. What the hell? Where's my coin? There was some hearing about this. Party? You went to the cast party, didn't you? I'm sure I. Oh, you know what? I didn't. I had something going on. I couldn't make it. Look at that no, I, Yeah, I, I didn't go. Look at he that went out of East house. So gross. I couldn't. I couldn't make it for some reason. Forgot about that. Oh, there's your picture again. Yay. Oh, oh my god, I love one. Michael. I, go he is in the, right our here. next film, too, uh, that we all worked on called Horrific Evil Monsters. Right and uh, um, if you like the story that he has in this one, you're going to like the story in the next one. 
because there's more of a story arc in that. I've actually been, since me and Michael have worked together, he's played only one other character, uh, correction, two other characters out of like 16 films we've worked on together. Wow. This scene, I love this scene. I remember setting this all up. Um, and Melody, do you remember the whole, like, like, do you remember the whole setup on this thing? As long as we stay in here, we should be safe. In general, I remember filming this and then, then trying to make work and then picking up like the thing and trying to make everything look realistic and I just love the shots in this. It's so good. Now, Jenny, did, did Melantha actually bite you? No, not with any kind of pressure. No. I mean, enough that I knew she was there, enough to get, you know, so that I could actually react. So there was something I was feeling, um, but I wouldn't say she bit me. Okay. I love this. This is one of the. This is like one of the iconic shots for the film right here. It's totally iconic. But going back to the eye patch thing real quick, like Melanth and I had talked a couple weeks before, and I'm like, hey, you know. Um, she, she probes me out the eye patch. I'm like, okay, bring it. We'll see what we can do. She gets the set, and everybody's looking at me like, you're going to give her an eye patch? Like, really? And I'm like, trust me, it's going to work. We're going to have to figure something out. And then we did the eye behind it. So it's like it can, it's permanently changed, and it works great. It gives it character. Yeah, I thought that was a nice touch when she, when she reveals the eye. That's different. That was a good touch. Yeah, I did love that. And this is where you see the switch of Harold, because at first you think maybe Harold's on your side, and then he kind of like says, uh-uh. Oh, badass feel moment. <laughs> Yo. Oh, so <laughs> that's, that's awesome. Oh, God, I love this scene. Like, this just talks to the brutality of this whole movie. There's so much brut brutalness behind it. <laughs> and Gregory and um, Steve, they worked off each other so well throughout the whole segment. And I remember he ends up, we ended up showing his head crushed. And there was an argument. It wasn't even an argument. It just I think it was because it was late. It was a frustration. I yelled at Phil and I said, get a cop. And we're going to, uh, phone cop, we're going to break it off and we're going to put blood on it. It's going to look like skull. So if you look at the shot, that's actually a styrofoam cup that's around him. And, uh, I, like how, I like how he slides down the stairs. That had to hurt. Uh, that hurt, had to hurt the bum a little bit. And being that it was so late, um, I had to get two shots. And I, we, we stopped because blood got in Steve's ear. And I'm like, Phil, now give me a little more blood after we got all the blood out of his ear right here. He goes back in and puts blood back in his ear a second time. <laughs> Adam, I actually got a question for you. How come you, because uh, I remember people talked about it, you didn't want to do it. How come you didn't put a uh, gun blast on the gun? You wanted just from that perspective of him getting shot. Hmm. That is a good question. Um, I, I thought there was like a, uh, just an artistic reason you wanted to do that or something. There was, we, because when you see gunfire, not always do you see the flash. And I wanted the connection to be like almost simultaneously when you, when they fired the weapon and you saw the reaction. So I wanted no one to actually catch on to the, the shotgun blast, or the gun blast. Gotcha. Also, can I talk about that last scene with tearing the shirt, how difficult that was? Yeah. Please. But not figure out tearing the shirt. Like we just kept trying. It wasn't working. Yeah like pre-cut part of it and then like fake tear it and it was just stupid for nothing it was that's awesome. great i forgot about that oh, so i was like yeah. laughing in real life so i was like this is ridiculous i can't i can't friggin you know tear shirt the things that go into movie making that people don't even think about oh yeah, yeah. The, a lot of stuff the cool thing with this is i don't know if you noticed this but um Gregory doesn't have a lot of blood on him like he did from the previous shot. It's because we shot it out of order, and it had to be edited in a way where you could not really make it out. So when you watch that scene, 
you probably didn't even notice it to be honest with you but he didn't have blood on his shirt so there's a continuity issue this is the scene i was talking about earlier about not feeling you know i i wanted to feel that tension this is the scene we were talking about i like how he throws the coins on his left hand for, there's a, I like the way it's shot too. I mean, I shot it, but I mean, it's such like in your face. It's like in your face. There's like this artistic look to it. It's one of my favorite films I've ever shot. The artistically, it's really. Cool. Oh, I love, love that. Oh. Guys. The makeup was excellent for everyone. Just. Mm -hmm. just so much gore. I remember he couldn't even talk. He had the teeth in his mouth. He had this amount of slime and he had blood in his mouth. So trying to get him to say the lines were, was very hard. Here you go, Melly. Tell us about this scene. Oh, my God. Having to crawl under that soaking, like, that blanket. Uh, that, like, stuff. Well, I guess that point. How, how that did that... Good. How, how did that dead decaying body smell? We just froze. Did someone ask me something? Uh, no. I said, how, how did that dead decaying body smell? You had to be right up near it and all that under the blanket. Yeah. Yeah. Thankfully, don't use real bodies. I mean, in real life, that would have been like... Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I give you life. You Johnny, this is your big moment, you know. Yeah, coming out. I remember I when I was playing. I'm sorry. Okay, well, I'm sorry. Shock stuff. Oh. He just got so into that. All of them with their eating and their. Oh. Well, Jenny, remember when you felt like you fell in it, like your chest stuck to the plastic? Yes. Yes, that's right. I thought I remember you saying something funny at the moment. I'm just like, yeah, this chick's awesome. This is a good, <laughs> this is going to be a great film. <laughs> and this goes back to what we were talking about too. Like my eyes were so entranced into the grotesqueness of it all. When the rip happens and you see your, you reveals your, your, your body. It's like, I don't even connect it. It's just like a gross thing that happens. Well, we also the timing, trying to get it timed. We had to like loosen it just the right way so it stayed up, but so that she could rip it down. And this was all Melantha. This was all Melantha. She's alive. It appears she is. And I just remember being glad that once the scene was over, I could eat. Because <laughs> I had been trying to eat so little on set, painting this scene. And once it was done, I just remember going up and just being like, ah. <laughs> this is a, this is like a really intense, like. Yeah, the lick, the, the, when she touches my nipple, the lick. I mean, she, that was all She's, her. Have you seen another girl running around? What were you going to say, Millie? No, ma'am. No, she's just so in, intense. Like, she never, her, I mean, she never said she was going to do in advance. We're really reacting to it in real time on film. When I return, There's the eye. And like she would ask permission if it was like, you know, like for the nipple thing, like, is, is this okay? And for the lick, but yeah, it was definitely, it wasn't like in the script that mm -hmm. she was trying to do that. I remember you being really cool with it too, and I'm just like, wow, I, you know, you guys are like giving it your all. All of you, I mean, all of us together, the entire crew, everything, we all like pushed ourselves to make that film. I mean, there were, we did a five day on and then we did a five day off, and we just like hammered it. Uh, Melody, do you remember the days and hours that you were on set for this? It was nuts. I mean, because I think I ended up only doing, I think I had eight days, maybe it was nine. Um, but it was all five days of the stuff when we were, you know, staying on on location for it. And yeah, I mean, I'm pretty sure it was like 15 hours on, typically covered in blood, 
And then it was like trying to spend a half hour showering, trying to get the dried blood off, get to bed for a few hours, then wake up and do it again. Um, but it was just so exciting and thrilling and stuff that I don't feel like any of us really felt the exhaustion until we went home. And then it almost felt like when we went home and we had that, like we had like two or three weeks off and then we shot again. It almost felt like a piece of, it did such a unique experience. It was almost like it was like a piece was missing. I don't know if you guys had that, but I had that. Yeah, well, it was totally different after filming a ton of it and just, you know, developing that kind of like family and then kind of coming to set for like a day. It felt strange. Do you know how to use this? Yeah, I was like, all right, so wait, where am I sleeping? Right. <laughs> I, I really enjoyed how we did this film. It was um, a scheduling nightmare, but and it, and it really pushed boundaries. It really pushed boundaries. And um, I think I think there's so much love that everybody put to it that it really comes off in film. And now here he's all bloody again. Right. Oh, I love all the scenes I get to do with Michael coming up. Wait, your crazy ass family of werewolves attacked you. Well, you had probably the most interaction, Melody, with Michael on this one. Are you high right now? Or I just think so. It was really one of my favorite parts and then of it. You bring this old man. Hey. Oh, was uh, was this the uh, film? Did, did you work with Michael the most on this film than any other project you've worked? Have you worked with Michael before on any other film? Pay me my money. I'm trying to remember. I know I've worked with him since, but I think this was the first i think this was the first project i i did I like with him well no no no. i'm sorry it was it was the first time i spent a lot of time with him i met him on the set of grace is gone um and we were just kind of like hang out all day we actually look if you're not going to help us fine chloe we need to and like spent a whole day just like talking and getting close um so that's how i kind of knew him when we went in to do this um but this was i think the most time i spent on a project with him Please, Christmas. Melody, do you remember that scene that both of you guys approached me with? You're like, can we do this? And I'm like, absolutely. That's the one I'm most looking forward to seeing story. again. Okay. Yeah, it's yeah, coming up. What can we do oh, for, for us, I feel exactly. like. Because he really I'm has been, here, since I met him, he's been like a, another time. father to me. And according to him, those other bitches got right back up. How do you plan to kill them? So it's cool to have that connection in this film. With this. You guys worked off each other very well, too. Yes. Yeah. Because I think for the most part, it's you and him to the end now. Yeah. If you help us, I'll show you where the rest of them are. You can have them all. This, is a real this I think, was one of, uh, Let's just um, uh, not Lori's, but uh, Leora's. This, again, was when Leora, I think, was starting to not feel too well. And she kept having trouble with lines. So we're like, just put the lines in the book. Remember, Melody? We were like, just put the lines in the book. Go ahead and read them. We're not, you know. Right, because we were really reading anyway. Yeah. yeah. And it came off almost seamless. You would never know that there was a problem. I actually went to, I actually went to Hollywood with Leora. Our 48-hour film festival won, and we went to Hollywood to represent Buffalo. So I spent quite a bit of time with Leora. Ranger over here knows how to make bullets. That's so awesome. She, she was a good actress. Sean Sanders, too. This was like, in my in my understanding, one of his bigger first projects to be a part of. I mean, he's done a lot of things, and he didn't. I, to me, he never seemed like he had a lot of speaking lines in the work that he was doing. And I maybe stand corrected with it, but like this really showed the depth of who he is as an actor, too, which I thought was very unique. And we ended up, I ended up loved that camaraderie so much that we brought him on 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 uh, Riffing Eel Monsters too. Yeah, he was so fun to work with. And Leora here actually slaps him I several love. times. And she was always like freaked out about slapping him and she would rush in right real fast and be like, Oh my god, are you okay? Are you okay? And then she'd like, you know, make sure he was alright. And he's like, Yeah, hit me again. <laughs> that was so cute. I love all like the insert shots in this scene. I like the score here. So badass. Here it is. There. <laughs> I remember it was like three or four takes at each angle. And we did it like three times, I think. And so that was like, what is it, nine hits that he had to get? It was a lot of 
was a decent amount for sure. Now, for those that don't know, uh, William Sanders' character is actually modeled after the real life, my grandfather, William Sanders, who was a detective. Um, and he never got encountered with freaking werewolves or anything, but... You know, I liked, I always thought he was a bigger, larger than life person and decided that uh, long ago that he would be like the focus of my stories. And this is the scene we're talking about. The ship sank during a hurricane that hit them on July 30th and 31st, 17th. You remember this scene, Melly, when we were trying to do the setup for it? Oh, absolutely. The ship sank yep. as and have survivor described from a beast. So many people in there, I, you know, position everybody and figure out the blocking of it and just the best way to, you know, to get everyone in it and get the shots. Yeah, okay. that was definitely a fun one, trying to fit everyone in around the fireplace and on the floor. It's during and, dusk. They seem to leave the house during the day. There, there you are. This is now, this is badass Chloe coming up now. Jason, Ash. That's right. I was so excited about this outfit. Chloe, myself, and Detective Dewey over here. We're going to push the I wish we would have used a different lighter color. That's the only thing I, I don't like about that. The yeah. outfit rocks. You have the shorts, you have the guns, you have, like all that rocks. I just feel the shirt it would have been like better as a lighter color. Yeah, it would have worked better with the blood and everything, I think. But those are the, the mistakes you have, and it is what it is. But uh, yeah. I like to think that I get so drenched. Like you can still tell that I am completely covered. Like, I don't think that there's anyone going, hmm, I wonder if she has blood on her. Yeah, well. <laughs> Do you really it was him? crazy, though. Talk to me about this guy. I, I absolutely I loved him. My God, he's but so cool and sweet. And it's just so funny that he's like a gentle giant. Um, and he was so cool that he's super into, I think he's very like spiritual, like with like energies and stuff. Um, and so it's so fun, like talking to him and hearing what he thinks about like my energy and um, he was just, I don't know. There was like a special, I feel like bond with him too. All right, here it is. You want to talk to us about this scene? I think we need to talk for a minute. Oh my God. I don't even know. I just feel like it's this kind of, of what we're up against. fatherly you know, talk with her. I just feel like he's somehow created this bond with her and he cares and he's worried about her. Um, yeah, I don't know. I just feel like they just developed this bond tired. so quickly, and it's just this well, sweet. Life ahead of you. I don't even know how to describe it. I just feel like it was just over. a moment. What would you rather I do? Would you rather like a quiet like moment this? and everything What's going saying, crazy around cool. them? We could be rich. Now I remember that this scene from. here was actually one control. continuous cut, but and I went back and forth with the scene that you guys thought of, and. Uh, like I tried to play off on it when we were doing editing on it, and if you watch it, it, it plays it. Yeah, I really like how it works with like this scene right here. Um, and I appreciate that you were so open to letting us do that. I promised I'd take. Well, I think it. I honestly think it paid off quite quite good. A dozen. Yeah, really. Right here. There it is. Are you all right? My heart. Yeah, I'm fine. Well, me and Ash are going to walk around back. Now, for those that don't know, Melody returns for the Rivig Eel Monsters as Samantha Romero, who is the sister to Chloe. Wait, what is this? And uh, we had like uh, this whole idea that I had pitched briefly. We didn't really get into it with uh, me and Melody, and I just kept telling her, after we get finished with the River Gale Monsters, I want to explore the Michael, the Chloe, and the Samantha relationship again on another project. Oh. And, um, plan? well, I don't. I think when we shot on the River Gale Monsters, I think you guys had just crossed paths. I don't even think you shared the scene together at all. Stop. And um, this was really the, that film, I think, that you didn't... You got a better one? We never got that opportunity. Yeah, I feel like we had talked about it, and like me and Michael had talked about it, and the idea that yeah, they kind of end up teaming up and, and bonding over the fact that you know they both had this connection with yeah. Chloe. Um, so yeah, I was very excited about that, but you know, gotta appreciate the times we did have together. So now, can we just talk about this prosthetic? It looks exactly like Burns. Thanks. Uh, <laughs> Jesus, Lord, help us. 
Oops. turned out great. And Gregory now. here, like uh, Johnny Stevens, when he's getting lifted up, he's actually sitting on a chair because he was so much taller than Gregory that we had to create the illusion that they were the same height. So Gregory is like almost, I think he's on his knees and Johnny's on the chair and they're just doing this thing and it worked out. Yeah. That car, that car was awesome too. Yeah. Oh, you got a great scene coming up with that car for sure. <laughs> well, what is that? What, what is that tar- car? Is that a, a town car or a Lincoln or? I think it might be a Lincoln or a Vic or a Crown. It's one of those. That is a nice car. Of this. That's thanks to the Zero since they got that for us. I am tired of this. Are you saying what? Here what she is, is again. That? Look at the hair. Even the hair worked. It was like what I don't know what she used in it, but like that gray, like <laughs> almost like I don't know what it was, but it, it worked so oh, well. Chloe. Really? All right, Melly, give us a little more background about what we're about to see here. All right, Chloe. Uh, um. Oh, uh, it's. It's a lot. Well, I no, love too the whole moment where they're like trying to talk to to Joe, and you hear Joe talking. They're like, "That's not Joe." Um, I feel like this is the moment when like shit gets a little crazy, because obviously right now Christmas is kind of laughing. He's starting to think this is a joke. I want to hear it, or maybe it's so unique to this was made on such a small budget. And a lot of us put everything we had into it. And um, I think it's a very effective film because it keeps you like very narrow. It's very narrow and it's very claustrophobic. And, you know, and it's so grungy. I mean, the, the some of the effects are sometimes you can't even watch them or listen to them. It's just, you know, it's one of those films that when, I, when we announced we were going to do this, I'm like, we're gonna go all the way with it. I want to do like a hostile or a saw type of grungy style film with the the effects. Talk to us about the blood melody, about the bucket of blood that's about to happen. I mean, the bucket of blood that was supposed to hit both of you. I mean, just hit you. I mean, I don't know. Uh-huh. Thing that me and Michael always ended up talking about was kind of our inside joke. Um, yeah, and the scene it ended up being what was it really? four thirty in the morning? Like the sun was about to come up, so we were like, we got to do this, we got to do it now, we got to do it quick. You um, get one take. And there was to hoist and throw. It was me and Michael standing together. You'll see. Um, and it was supposed to go on both of us. However, every drop of it landed on me and soaked me. I got on Michael, and Michael talks about all you him. Okay. And the look of like okay. real so, anger yeah, and fury on my face, and, that wasn't Joe and like we couldn't break because we had one oh. shot at it. Um, and that was like our favorite thing was how that pissed we were that he was completely dry. A big ass animal. Yeah, I, I just love this. You know, we didn't see the the wolf a lot in it, and I feel like you really didn't have to. It's like seeing the the shark in Jaws. You only saw it so much, and you saw it at the right moments. The same thing with this film. And it doesn't make it feel too hokey because the wolf could have been way better. And uh, I don't know what you guys thought of it when you saw it for the first time, but it could have been way better. And um, we just didn't have the budget for it. So we had to make it work with the sound effects, kind of like the barrels and jaws. This would be like the wolf running away because of the pattering of the feet. Well, I, actually thought the wolf, I actually thought the wolf looked really cool. <laughs> the wolf had I did. Great legs. I liked it. <clears throat> the wolf had great legs. <laughs> <laughs> Melody, how you feeling right now? <laughs> oh my god, I haven't seen this since. Again, it's it's so funny to watch it back. It's so great to see Michael and I, that scene. It's so funny watching it back. In the moment, it was horrible, and looking back, it's just so great. We have to keep Melody, didn't she pop one of her nails off here when she opens the door? I can't remember. Like she goes to the door. Yeah. I thought she pops off her nail. It happened a oh, yeah. few times during the shoot. Other times too, she seemed like she was always going back to have to get the foot back on. Oh, fuck. Yeah. Well, you know all about nails, don't you, Jenny? Oh yeah, good point. Yeah. The, <laughs> oh yes. Tail for a different day, I suppose. Yeah. We'll save that for the horrific evil monsters. You think the person's trying to stop us? 
No. It's so it's so awesome. Now by this time, I think this was our last day at the property. We were hauling ass. Um, oh yeah. I remember we had problems. I remember we had problems trying to get into the barn because the landowner and all that. So we finally got in there. Did anybody here ever expect there was a problem <laughs> offset? Like the, the the stuff was happening with the landowner behind the closed doors. Us on property knew because we all had to hide, and uh, I think the stuff that came up afterwards. I don't know when. I heard about that the first time. The stuff that came up, like after you guys actually checked out. So, in, in, in other words, you're never invited there again. Is that what you're saying? I would never pay that woman to be on our property again. Yeah. Melody, we were talking about you recently about uh, the gang where you get your hair pulled. You're on the. Remember, you're on that dolly. And, can you talk a little bit about the dolly and what you had to do to make that loop work? That was, that was fun. Yeah, I'm trying to remember all that. But yeah, I remember it was like, yeah, this effect where I got to be dragged. And so we're like, okay, it's literally gravel. So it had to be, I think someone had a hold of my like harness I had for the guns. Had a hold of that, had a hold of my hair. And I was on this like little small dolly that my ass was on. And then I had to like kick with my feet and kick myself backwards as I was being pulled. Um, it was a whole orchestrated thing, but it was a lot of fun. And I'm so excited about this shot right here. You just straight up cut off his head. Just like butter. Oh. Just, so you, just so you know, that is your head, Jason, in the Rific Eel Monsters as well. Wow, that's a lot of head going around. Yep. <laughs> I love this shot, too. Again, we're getting yeah. an illusion. We hear you scream, but we don't see you die. Do you guys remember um, reading the alternate endings? Remember there were alternate endings for this? That's right. Do, do you remember, like, uh, did you have a preference over one? I mean, both Jenny, you die in both. I think, Melody, did you die in both? No, I don't think so. I think only in one that I did, and the other one I think I got away. Well, because I think you ended up combining them, so I'm trying to remember, like, what was what. Like, I know... Yeah. One of them, she gets the acid water like on Roy, and then one ends up on one of her allies instead. Um, I remember there were a few things like that. I think, I think for me, I like the original ending instead of the alternate one, but that might have also had to do with like if I survive or not. So <laughs> we don't know. I love these shots. These shots where everybody's eating breakfast, and I'm just like Pat or Keith. I'm like, let's go film something real quick if we could. If you look at the the book that's being held, my wife wrote a script for a film that someday may get made about the Wild West, and uh, we put a little subliminal in there. Of course you did. You gotta get. Let's take a look. You gotta support. This is her first speaking line too. This is Kristen, my wife, and this is her first speaking line. And any other time she's been in one of the films that we've done, she's been like a zombie. So, and all bloody. Uh -huh. So this was like, she was like, we would rehearse this stuff, and uh, it's kind of cool. It's kind of fun. It's nice when you could do that together, when you work on your passions together. Yeah. I like the ending, too, because it makes you want more. Um, the one complaint I've ever heard about this film, that it, besides the amount of grunge that's in it, is the... Um, no, I'm that it's too short like we want to see more and, and that was done slightly by design and because our, we didn't have the budget to so what to make a longer film i heard a, i heard a rumor that in part two chris comes back from the dead as a so werewolf no what? What? that's what i heard you'll just be a shoulder with no head walking around with claws <laughs> well i'm just telling you what i heard <laughs> I love this scene because yes. this again is taking Michael's story arc to the next level. We know something's wrong with him, and uh, he's he survived somehow. Um, we don't know what happened to Chloe at this point. We don't know where she is at this moment, and how he got away. We don't know any of that story. And and that right there, where he, uh, he takes his glasses off, that's totally all about uh, horrific evil monsters. Yeah, a precursor to that film. 
I remember we did a take of that, and we were very, we were very like, don't tell anybody that he's going to be in this film because he's been that same Mick that has been in that same character for other films that I've done, recruiting characters to be in in their the next film or the this the Rift Eagle Monsters when we get there, and um, so I was very like, I don't want to spoil the surprise for people that actually care about that. So I was very close with the people about having him on and off, and at one time he actually. Um, there's a shot that never made the cut of the film, but he actually has a skeleton hand. He takes off his glove and reveals a skeleton hand to show that Mick is also something more besides the eyes. But it didn't work, and it looked very bad. Um, it wasn't like a fill job. It was something we tried to do at the very last minute with uh, no budget, and we're just like, we're going to cut that completely. So we're in the end credits. Let's just kind of do a sum up. We got about, I don't know, about four minutes. If we can keep an eye on the clock with that and just kind of give us your last uh, last little bit. We'll start off with Jason. Um, I would just say that I you know, I really enjoyed working with uh, everyone who's in this interview right now and uh, definitely want to work with you all again. It was fun. Movie making is fun if it's done the right way. and. Uh, for a no-budget film, I think uh, we did pretty good here. So, yeah, I think that's all I would say. Jenny? I just, I loved the experience. I loved being with you guys in Cuca Lake for four days. I loved um, then going out to Buffalo weeks later and working with you guys there. And what I really loved is um, getting this film family, this new film family, because I, you know, had other film families that I'd worked on. on several other movies with but now another film family that i could then look forward to future projects with including the horrific evil monsters and hopefully more to come i would say there's more to come <laughs> yeah and i i was just super grateful to, to be a part of it uh my first horror film i'm pretty sure it was probably my first feature i believe um that i was prominent in and it was just really a joy to get to know everybody on the cast and crew. I feel like we got so close and it's just been so fun even since then. Like it wasn't just the filming that was fun, it's everything since. Um, and everything that's gone into it and the premiere and just it's really cool how Fang has kind of lived on and been so fresh even after these few years since it's been out. You know, people still ask me like if it just came out. Um, and yeah, I just think it's a really special project and I don't know, I love the family, and it's cool that this is kind of like a whole universe, that it's not just one film. It's cool that I'm, I'm glad we were able to get you to come back as Samantha and, and create a little bit of an arc going forward, because I think there's still stuff to see with Chloe, um, and I think there's uh, I think there's more stories for everybody to be a part of. I, I worked with Jason for how many years now? Jenny, we worked on <laughs> two films. If I would have known you sooner, we've been, we would have been working together, you know, even more. Um, one of the main things that we did in this film is because Jason and, and um, Jenny were so prominent and not to create, take away from their characters from this film and allow their characters to live on, we gave them a whole different look for the horrific evil monsters. And at times, I mean, you know that they are who they are, but at times, you know, you, you, it, doesn't, it doesn't break continuity in my opinion. I don't know how you guys feel about it because I know Jason, you've seen a little bit of the horrific evil monsters. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't know how much you've seen of it, Jenny. Uh, have you seen anything yet? I don't think so, no. Wow, I feel privileged. Yeah, I've only seen stills. I haven't seen anything that we actually shot. I don't think, not that I can I, think of. I've actually yeah. seen quite a bit. You've actually, uh, not recently, but you've sent me a couple four minute clips here and there, I believe. Yeah, we'll talk about good. it. Looks we'll really talk good. about that uh, in the post credit show here. Just wanna say everybody, thank you very much for being a part of this event. It was awesome. And um, we hope to see you very soon. Goodbye, everybody. <laughs> uh.